Welcome to the Elite Universe, Commander. My name is Drew Wager, a lifelong fan of the Elite franchise. If you're looking for an orientation on this decade-spanning game, you've come to the right place. This is the Metalore, the third Elite of 1995. Frontier First Encounters continued the timeline and theme established in a previous work, Frontier Elite 2, and in many ways could be considered a direct sequel, though this was the subject of a rather public and very acrimonious exchange between the original creators of Elite, David Braben and Ian Bell. The sound card is now working. By their mutual agreement, Ian Bell was entitled to a percentage of royalties on the sale of Frontier Elite 2. This agreement granted Braben exclusive rights to sequels and mission discs. The issue appeared to be that Ian Bell was under the impression that a number of add-ons and mission discs would be produced, driving sales of the base game Frontier Elite 2, and thus royalties for him, and that a genuine sequel, presumably based on new technology, couldn't be expected for quite some time. In reality, despite being originally announced in the press as an expansion to Frontier Elite 2, Frontier First Encounters was published as a sequel a mere two years later, effectively supplanting Frontier Elite 2, and thus preventing any further royalties being paid to Ian Bell. The dispute, which has resulted in the pair not talking to each other since, rumbled on for a number of years, involving lawsuits, libel, and, rather unedifyingly, exchanges between the pair in the popular gaming press of the time. At Elite's 25th anniversary in 2009, both were present at the event, but refused to share a stage. As to whether Frontier First Encounters is a genuine sequel to Frontier Elite 2, it's difficult to make a precise determination. Certainly it's a standalone product, and does not require the previous game to be owned or installed. However, it bears more than a passing similarity to the previous game in terms of its general look and feel, clearly sharing considerable quantities of code. The intro music, whilst composed by David Lowe, has far less flair than the original, and the intro sequence is less well orchestrated and timed. In terms of the lore, Frontier First Encounters is set 50 years further on in the timeline, the year now being 3250. In this game you, as the pilot, were no longer a descendant of the previous incumbent as before, but an unnamed commander of no particular significance as the game opens. You're given a new spacecraft called a Saker Mark III, which is, to all intents and purposes, exactly like the Eagle from the previous game, with the same limitations on cargo and capability. A new political entity, the Alliance, was introduced alongside the Federation and the Empire, and this is the locale for the start of the game. On first impression, the gameplay seems almost identical to Frontier Elite 2. The dialogue, menu options, and tone of the game are virtually identical. There have been no significant changes to the bulletin board, stock market or the shipyard, though a variety of new and often rather outlandish ship designs are present. The Saker itself is a good example of this, with strange acute wings and a rotating engine. Other ships have moving parts rather reminiscent of the core of the TARDIS, with a strange oscillating behaviour. The same basic missions, including assassinations, deliveries, reconnaissance and politically specific duties, are present as before, along with the generic background of trade and piracy. All the other mechanics, such as elite rank, reputation with the political powers, ship limitations, equipment, with a few small additions, hyperspace and mining, again are effectively identical. The user interface is quite different, however. It's certainly more ergonomic than before, taking much more of the form of a ship's console than the functional but flat version of the previous right. game. The however, much usability has been sacrificed in order to achieve this. Parts of the console are often obscured by text, and the main scanner scope is now too small to be useful and rotates unnecessarily in a disconcerting fashion. The key difference between Frontier Elite 2 and Frontier First Encounters is that it contains a series of scripted missions. The player's successes, or failures, are conveyed by coverage in five in-game newspapers, all with different political, scientific or populist spins on the subject and thus the player gains either notoriety or ridicule as time goes on. These scripted missions span a period of time from the outset in 3250 to around 3255. These missions do introduce a much needed story element into the game and outline many of the lore aspects utilised later on in Elite Dangerous. Here the story of the Thargoids is told in detail, along with lots of other minor details of interest. 
the player is awarded with a Quest-class ship and ultimately able to fly a Thargoid warship. However, along with the rest of the game, these missions never really came to a satisfactory conclusion. Notably, the background to Raxler and the Dark Wheel is not expanded upon at all. Whilst the game engine had been upgraded with Gorad shading, texture mapping and the use of procedural generation for the planet surfaces, it was already looking quite old by the standards of the day. Games such as X-Wing, Descent and Quake sported superior graphics, higher resolutions, faster gameplay and support for discrete 3D graphics cards such as the 3DFX Voodoo series. This 3D exhilaration would soon render the blocky low resolution graphics of Frontier First Encounters antiquated by comparison. The product was also rushed to market and suffered as a result. The publisher, GameTech, was struggling financially at the time and clearly hoped for a cash injection from revenue from sales. Unfortunately this backfired as the game was incomplete at launch and riddled with bugs. The game was patched, but this being the pre-internet era for most buyers, this took the form of discs being sent out with modified files. Ultimately David Braben brought a lawsuit against GameTech, which was eventually settled out of court in 1999. It was also a PC-only product, with no version ever being provided for the Commodore Amiga or the Atari ST computers. It was provided in floppy disk and CD-ROM versions, the latter having a series of extremely poor quality full-motion video characters on the bulletin boards. Now being a 32-bit game, the only non-PC option was for it to be available on the late model Amiga and CD32, Welcome. but due to the lack of sales success, this version was cancelled. Frontier First Encounters was the first game produced by the then newly formed company, Frontier Developments, which went on to produce many different games over the next two decades. But sales of Frontier First Encounters are estimated at less than 100,000 copies. Reviews of the time were mixed, with some being positive, but others totally scathing due to the bugs present. And despite being patched, the game was already in the bargain bin at computer outlets by 1996. From 1995 onwards, there was silence on the subject of another Elite sequel. Occasional rumours of Elite 4 would surface from time to time, but nothing concrete emerged. It would be 17 years before another official Elite would be created, and in the meantime, the fans carried the torch. <laughs>